Yo. Crimson Legend. Todd ain't showing up today. That's okay. That's Frenzy Regen. Should be fine. Juke TK. See, you don't want to overlap in solo shuffle. That's like the most important thing. Kill the warrior? I have Cocoon off this. Please don't die. Nice IBF. Cocoon. Oh. Never give up. Never give up. Yo, what's going on, everybody? This is Mystical. Today, I am bringing you a Mistweaver solo shuffle guide. I've been getting questions on builds and how to build it and most important things for solo shuffle. So I thought I would share kind of some of my knowledge and what I've been doing to push in solo shuffle. Now, I'm not going to lie. When I first started playing solo shuffle and when it was first announced, I had my doubts. I didn't think it was that fun of a game mode. And I found it more frustrating than fun. But... It is actually a little bit, quite more fun than I thought it was going to be. So I, what I enjoy the most about it is how the little things matter, dispels matter, using your tiger's lust to keep up time for your melee matter, things like that matter. And ever since I started putting in some work in Solo Shuffle, we are currently the number one misweaver in Solo Shuffle, and we ended last season at like number two. We were the high, second highest rated misweaver, almost like thirty six hundred. Uh, so yeah, it's. Solo Shuffle, I put some work in for it. It's actually a little bit more fun than I thought it was going to be. I'm going to start off this video how I start off every guide, and that is with races. Because I actually think races are, differ from Arena to Solo Shuffle. For Alliance, you could be human, but I think the two best races, there's actually probably three. There's Dark Iron Dwarf, there's Night Elf, and there's Gnome. These are the three races that you can play, kind of depending on the meta. Of course, races really comes down to the meta. If Feral Druids, Affliction Warlocks, Assassination Rogues are good, Normally, Dark Iron Dwarf is pretty safe because you can dispel the bleeds and the dots, the curses that they have. Night Elf, just an overall good pick. You know, you can Shadow Meld and avoid CC. But the biggest thing about Night Elf is you cannot Shadow Meld drink because you cannot drink in Arena or sorry, in Solo Shuffle. So the only value you're getting out of Shadow Meld is probably once a round, and that's to avoid one. CC on you, which could be game breaking, but in my opinion, I don't think it's that it makes that big of a difference. However, Gnome I have found is to be really, really strong and powerful versus a lot of things. You know, you have the Hunter roots, you have Mage roots, Shadow Priests have roots now, Warriors have slows and roots. So, oh, a lot of classes have slows and roots now. So, I'm really been playing Gnome and I really like it a lot. Also, of course, Root Beam versus Balanced Roots is insane. So, you, you completely negate. Every balanced druid main CC because you're a gnome. So I think it's really good. You can it's escape artist. It's really really good. So gnome and dark iron dwarf I think are my favorite races for uh, solo shuffle. But you know night elf and human are good. They're good too. For horde I actually think the best race is undead. Just hands down. I don't know. I orc is good because of the sun reduction, which is great. But as a misweaver, I have found that not a lot of people will try to kill me because you have eminence. That allows you to port while stunned and you have restoral that you could use while stunned So a lot of teams will opt to just try to kill your DPS and CC you So I don't actually think you get a lot of value out of the sun reduction Undead however with will the forsaken is just insane Yeah, you get a lot of value of against evokers warriors warlocks priests anything like that As I usually use my trinket first then you have your undead racial versus one of those then you can trinket again later so I think Undead is the best race, followed by Orc. I don't think there's any other races on the Horde side that really matter that much. It's basically between these two. Next up, we have Gearing and Stats, and I would highly recommend going Haste Verse. For Solo Shuffle, I think Haste is very, very good in Solo Shuffle. You get a lot of value out of certain talents like Rapid Diffusion, Shaylin's Gift with the reduced cast time, even with Legacy of Wisdom. You want to reduce the man the cast time of that, and you just get a lot of value from your Hot, your Enveloping Mist as well. So you kind of want to stack as much Haste Verse as you can. I would say right now on my main, I have 25% Haste, 86% Mastery, which is pretty good um you could probably get away with about 20 21 percent haste and then put the rest in the mastery whatever that number is which is fine but for the most part yeah i'm just stacking haste first in pretty much every slot i'm jamming for it um i actually have mastery stat uh enchants on this but they, if you're focusing on shuffle i would just go haste as far as tier set goes, I would highly recommend playing two set uh, and four set. I am playing two set right now. It is very good. It is very good. It is a little bit RNG though. There are some rounds where it, you know, it restored about 30, 40 K mana. And then there's other rounds where it restored 15 K. So there is a little bit of RNG to it, but I think overall, um, as an average, 
the two set restored a good amount of mana and obviously with the four set i don't have it yet i raided i literally raided all weekend i mean i straight up raided heroic and normal and i did not get a single tier piece um but i think four set is going to be good as well because when you get that proc or you use a t which is like your thunder focus t yeah you increase the healing of your vivify and renewing mist by 40 percent 20 percent pvp for six seconds which is just it's just good it's 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 straight up just good so I would highly recommend getting the tier set. I'm going to put it on pretty much every slot except for legs. Legs have haste crit, and I'd rather have the verse because you're losing a lot of verse with uh, the other four pieces. Next up, we have talents. So talents, again, the, the beauty about talents, this expansion, is you can kind of mix and match depending on, you know, what you want. I kind of think my build is pretty solid. I'll kind of go over it and let you know what I play and what you can change potentially. So on the left-hand side, we have the monk talent tree. And... There isn't much I would change here. Um, again, the big thing about solo shuffle is that each round, it's six rounds, and each round is about, I would say, two to three minutes max. Maybe you get a three and a half minute game if your DPS, you know, maybe aren't, you know, coordinating or something like that. But I would say max, it's a two to three minute game. So Fort Brew, for example, you're reducing it to four minute cooldown isn't going to do anything. It does nothing. And I've died through Iron Shell Brew. So I don't really opt to go uh, for a point into fortifying brew just because there's just there's really no point in it. Um, and then as far as everything else goes, you know, you got your roll, you got your defensives, you got diffuse magic, damp and harm, which are really important. Escape from reality is very important as well. Um, close to heart is good. The instant vivify is is I would think is is very important talent. And yeah, I uh, it's pretty standard. I don't think there's much I would change in this build. But if you if you're changing anything, let me know. If you're using something different, would love to know. Would play around with some some talents. But this is pretty much how I run every single game. On the right hand side, we have the Mistweaver talents. And again, there really isn't much I would change here. They just gave us Crystal's baseline, which was beautiful. And they gave us and we have Comic Coalescence. And Comic Coalescence is. It's really good. It's really good. It, this will give you a huge cocoon, even late in dampening. You can get like a 300k shield, which is just insane. Um, but outside of that, obviously, you do want to play Restoral. You definitely do want to play Restoral unless you're playing against like Affliction Warlock Ellie Shaman or Shadow Priest Ellie Shaman. Something where it's double dots, where you're going to get a lot of value out of Revival because it dispels magic. Uh, I would play Revival. Outside of that, I'd play Restoral, especially against teams with multiple stuns. Uh, it's going to be very, very helpful. I do play long Yulon because, again, Yulon, uh, she, it, if you play short Yulon, you're not really saving mana. So long Yulon, and again, because it's solo shuffle, depending on when you use Yulon, you're only going to use her once, maybe twice. That's why I use her very quickly in solo shuffle because I want to be able to get a second one later in the game. And then I do play life cycles over mana T. And then down here, these are different talents that I don't normally run in arena, but I do run Shailun's Gift and all of the other talents that kind of buff it a bit. So Shailun's Gift gives you a you you every time every eight seconds you're in combat, you're gonna get a stack of Shailun's Gift. And then depending on the buff you get, you get a different effect. So I do have a key, uh, I do have a weak core that tracks when what my next Shailun's Gift buff is gonna be. But all of them are pretty good. Lesson of Anger is okay, but they're all pretty solid. So. They help with shuffle and the dampening. And then Legacy of Wisdom makes it so Shailun's Gift heals two additional allies and the cast time's reduced, which is really good because when you combine that with like, um, uh, what's it called? When you combine that with Precog, your cast time on Shailun's Gift is like one second. So it's really, really good. Um, and then those are my talents. Yeah, those are those are my Mistweaver talents. There's nothing really I change going from game to game. I'm trying to think of any points you could change. Maybe you can drop one here. Um, for the cast time and Shailun's Gift, but for the most part, I really don't. If you don't like Shailun's Gift, that's fine. You could always go to Misty Peaks as well. I use Misty Peaks pretty much all of Season 1, so that's fine too. Completely personal preference. I just found that like Misty Peaks doesn't really proc as often as I thought it would. So, I don't know. I don't know what happened to it, but maybe I just got like really bad RNG a few games in a row and I got really annoyed. So, you could swap between Shailun's Gift and Misty Peaks depending on, you know, maybe you can't cast. Maybe you have, there's a lot of interrupts on the other team then you can drop it. That's completely fine. Next, we have PvP talents, and there are some that change depending on what I came into, so I just want to talk about that. First up, Zen Spheres quickly has become one of my favorite talents in the game, it, easily. So what this does is you put a sphere, you can have two spheres out at once. You can have one on your ally and one on the enemy, but you can't have two on the same thing. So one on each, and when you put on an ally, it increases your healing done to the target by 15%, which is crazy. And then when you put on an enemy, that target takes 10%, 
more damage and then takes 10 gives and then deals 10 percent less damage to you uh so that's really good keep that in mind if you're being targeted by an enemy let's just say it's a one rogue sitting on you you want to put zen sphere on the rogue because that rogue is going to do 10 percent less damage to you not only are they taking 10 percent more damage they're dealing 10 percent less damage to you which is very important so Zen Spheres, I take every single game. This is, this is I would say this is a mandatory PvP talent. You get way too much value. Solo Shuffle is all about uptime, all about damage, all about the little things like the spells on, on CC to keep your teammates having uptime. So Zen Spheres, very, very important. That 10% damage is crazy good and 15% more healing. Next up, Peace Weaver. Um, yeah, Peace Weaver, again, I would say this is pretty close to a mandatory talent. Unless you're queuing into double physical damage. Like, let's just say you're queuing into Windwalker, Arms Warrior. Uh, I would drop Peace Weaver. You know, you don't need it for that. Something like that where it's double physical damage, then yeah, I would drop Peace Weaver. But outside of that, Peace Weaver gets a lot of value. Especially, again, it's solo shuffle. The rounds are fast. Little things matter. Peace Weaver makes your team immune to all magic. So that includes crowd control. So if your team's going for a kill, you can go in. You can use Peace Weaver and maybe immune a cyclone to stop any peels on your teammates. Very, very important. Stuff like that. You could also stop damage like Chaos Bolts. Because, again, a lot of cooldowns, you can, a lot of enemy cooldowns, maybe they use once, maybe a second time. But they are not probably won't get to a third time if it's a two-minute cooldown. So Peace Weaver is really good for those situations. Uh, so yeah, Peace Weaver, that's when I use Peace Weaver. And then the third one, again, what it comes down to is what I'm queuing into. Um, if I'm queuing into like casters, I'll play Zen Focus T, right? Mages, Warlocks, Shadow Priest, stuff like that. Especially if there's multiple kicks, multiple range kicks. Disarm, I'll use versus Warriors. So Warriors, I will, you know, it's really good to disarm their, their cooldowns. You could be aggressive and disarm DKs, but I'm going to be honest with you, I don't see a lot of DKs out there. I really don't. And then Eminence, really good for avoiding CC and staying alive. Really good for sub rogue, so they can't really swap to you. Um, anything with multiple stuns that you think might kill you or CC you. For example, maybe you get Hodge and then someone tries to Cyclone you. You can port the Cyclone while you're stunned. So really good for avoiding CC, avoiding damage. And it's really important to avoid damage and solo shuffle. But those are pretty much the PvP talents I use. It's really just a combination of those four or five uh, PvP talents. It just depends on what I'm queuing into. I have a huge guide on how to heal and the breakdowns of all the healing rotations and all that in my arena guide. I will put a link to that guide in the description. But for this guide, I'm just going to give you what how I heal and what I do to keep my team alive. Hopefully, this is, you know, I'll, I'll try to make it as quick and painless as possible. I will first, I just want to talk about some important talents very quickly. Some... So we have Vivacious Vivification, which makes my Vivify instant. This is good because it works really well with life cycles, which makes it so when you Vivify, it reduces the mana cost of, of Enveloping Mist by 25%. And when you use Enveloping Mist, it reduces the mana cost of Vivify by 25%. So, you know, for an instant Vivify, I get a mana reduction by this next Enveloping Mist. And then you have the bread and butter of our rotation is Cloud of Focus. So whenever you heal with Enveloping Mist or Vivify, it increases the healing and, man and reduces the mana cost of your next Vivify or Enveloping Mist. And that stacks up to three times. So you can go for an, an instant uh, Vivify, get a mana reduction, and then you get the mana reduction on the Viv Enveloping Mist, and then you can just Vivify, Vivify, Enveloping Mist. So I just want you to keep that in mind. That's kind of how I'm able to keep my mana at a relatively you know good good amount going into Late and Shuffle, because you can just keep track of the life cycles buff with the... Um, you should be fine. Also, don't forget, Yulon does reduce the mana cost of, of Enveloping Mist by 50%. So keep that in mind as well. There's a, we have a lot of modifiers for mana reduction. And we also have... We have four, I don't have four set right now, but you might want to keep track of the four set when you get it. So you know when you have the healing bonus. Our healing our healing breakdown pretty comes down to Renewing Mist on as many people as possible. And then, obviously, Vivify heals main target and heals whoever has Renewing Mist on them. So, again... If you're healing somebody with Renewing Mist, you're also going to heal them a second time. So keep that in mind. And yeah, so my healing breakdown is pretty much just keep Renewing Mist on as many people as possible. Let me show, let me um, have floating combat text for you so we can actually see numbers going out. And outside of that, you're going to use your Instant Vivify for the Life Cycles buff. And then from there, you're just going to use Enveloping Mist to kind of keep your team alive. You, get, you want to play two Rapid Diffusions because this frees up some globals a lot where... You know, maybe you have to spend time, you know, pressing Renewing Mist and wasting, not wasting, but like using two globals. You could just use like an envelop, uh, you know, an enveloping mist to put a Renewing Mist on somebody and it was probably spread and you can just keep healing, you know, spam healing wherever it's Renewing Mist on them and you just do a lot of healing. 
And that's, that's, that's the basic of the healing breakdown is keep renewing mist on as many people as possible. Use your instant enveloping mist. Use your instant vivify if there's kicks available for a life cycles buff. If not, just go for, you know, soothing mist, vivify, vivify, get some stacks of cloud focus, and then use an enveloping mist to get the mana reduction, which is really nice. Um, outside of that, you want to keep track of your thunder focusing. So this is a really important spell. Very, very important spell. What it does is when you use Thunder Focus C, it empowers your spells. Um, with your Focus Thunder Talent here, it's going to empower two spells. So what this is, what what I use it for is for Enveloping Mist and Vivify. So for Enveloping Mist, it'll immediately heal for X amount, and it's instant. So really good if there's kicks available. And then Vivify, it makes it so Vivify costs no mana. Those are the two. There's other options with Renewing Mist, Essence Fought, and Rising Sun Kick, but those are the two that I really use. So you get your renewing mist out, you get your renewing mist out. So remember, Thunder Focus T makes this whole Vivify cost no mana. So what you can do is you can Soothing Mist, Thunder Focus T while channeling Soothing Mist, Vivify, Vivify, cost no mana, and then you get two stacks of Cloud of Focus, and you throw an Enveloping Mist. So for 1% mana, 1% <laughs> mana, and I got, a, I, got a ma I got a mana buff. So for literally zero mana, I got two stacks of Cloud of Focus because I used Thunder Focus T, two Vivifies, and then I used Enveloping Mist. Because, and then that gives you the mana reduction from your life cycles and the cloud of focus buff. So that's that's a lot of healing. That is a lot, a lot of healing that you did not need to use hardly any mana for. And that's kind of the bread and butter of it. I mean, that's really the healing rotation you're looking for. It goes without saying, of course, you want to put Zen Sphere on whoever your primary healing. It Remember, Zen Sphere has no... Zen Sphere. Zen Sphere, Zen Sphere has no cooldown and costs no mana. So as long as your teammate isn't immediately dying at like one percent i would recommend to prioritize zen sphere on your teammate that whoever's taken you know the most damage because you want to get that 15 percent healing bonus um as well as you know make sure you keep a zen sphere on the enemy as well because that makes it so your team can stay aggressive outside of your basic rotation of renewing mist thunder focus t vivify enveloping mist you also have your shaylun's gift and shaylun's gift gives some good buffs i do have a weak aura for tracking what the next buff is going to be and what the current buff is if you want that weak aura it's in the description it's all yours um you can track so my next buff is gonna be 40 percent more healing i tend to use shaylun's gift when one or two people you know are, are taking some damage at like 60 70 maybe 50 60 percent and it's really good for baiting out precog I'll get his I'll get his kick here. Got it. Beautiful. Big Shaylin's gift here. There's not really a good or bad time to use it, in my opinion. Just press it, get a buff, and then keep healing. Um, it does a pretty good amount of healing too. If for and it heals two extra people, so you know you get it heals pets too, which is great. So it's it's really nice. Now later in dampening, it's not going to do as much healing, but you do get the buff. So that's you later in dampening at like three minute mark. You're mostly just doing it for the buff to keep your team alive to try to push in for a kill. Unfortunately, healing is the easy part for Miss Weavers and Shuffle and in normal arena. So as soon as you get your healing rotation down and you kind of you're comfortable with your healing rotation i'd start queuing some shuffle but the unfortunate thing is for miss weavers you want to keep your team aggressive as much as you can i don't think we win sitting 40 yards away maybe you can you know but later in dampening i think every healer is going to struggle what you want to do is you want to keep your team aggressive with your cc with your zen spheres with your cooldowns as much as you can if you start falling behind and your team starts to turtle that's when you're going to start losing that that you start to lose when your team is not constantly pushing into the enemy team because then you you're forced to run back you're you're forced to use some mana your cooldowns maybe it just does it isn't good i think that that's the issue with pretty much any healer is when you start losing offensive uptime it's just over because again shuffle three minute rounds if that so you need your team to stay aggressive Again, I mentioned it before, Zen Sphere, keep it up on the enemy as much as you can. Keep it up on your teammate, but especially keep it up on the enemy. That is 10% damage from everywhere. That's that's basically the other team. The, whoever has Zen Sphere has 10% less versatility. So put keep Zen Sphere on the enemy team. You want to use your Yulon uh, to keep your team alive. I use Yulon pretty much as, as often as I can, and she reduces the mana cost of your Enveloping Mist. So again, if you put that in combination with your Vivified Thunder Focus Tees, and you're looking at literally using 1% mana for the absolute most amount of healing you could possibly do. So that's why I use Yulon really quickly, as as, fa as much as fast as I can. That way, later in the game, I have a second one for the mana reduction, and then try to get a push for the kill. Your, your crowd control and your ring of peace are very important tools to have. So in cap, 
30 second cooldown use your in cap when you're trying to extend crowd control so a really good example is if warlocks are really good right now if your warlock gets a fear on the enemy healer that is fantastic what i will do is i'll keep an eye on my warlock i'm gonna see is my warlock able to get a follow-up fear are they are they stunned are they kicked right now if i see that they're kicked i'll go for an in cap off the fear into a leg sweep nice 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 a panda so what you're trying to do and your goal with your crowd control is to extend cc chains your cc is instant right you have you have in cap you have leg sweep you have rop technically you could have song but probably not and so you have these tools to help your team just lock down the enemy healer because what you want the enemy healer to do is to fall behind when an enemy healer is falling behind they have to heal a lot more because you're in high dampening they have to use a lot more mana because of the dampening and they have to either waste their time because of rop so they're just going to fall further behind or they could just you just lose the round because you just have more crowd control so you want to make sure you do your best to not DR your leg sweep with any stuns. Try to use your in cap on, on healers when you can and keep your team aggressive that way. Another very important thing, and I mentioned earlier that a lot of teams don't go you in solo shuffle. That doesn't stop them from hitting you, though. What you want to do is you want to try to avoid taking damage at all costs. Try your best to minimize how much damage the enemy team has on you, or if they can hit you, try to position in a better spot. So what I'll try to do as far as positioning goes is I'll try to stay on the pillar as much as I can. I I, I don't want to push in, but you know you are gonna play. There are you know obviously you're gonna it's RNG, but you're gonna you're gonna queue into with two melee, right? So you're gonna have two melee on your team that can't just they can't just push back to the pillar. They have to push in, be aggressive, and they know that too. Hopefully. So you need to push in. So normally with casters, what I'll do is on any map, I'll try to put my port on the, uh, the closest pillar near me. But let's just say the enemy team is like over here. Let's just say this is, you know, this is a caster right here. Your, your melee are going to have to push in. So what I'll do is I'll try to push in on this, like Nagrand, for, for example. I'll try to push in on their pillar, put my port down. Mystic touch is really important too. This is when you do any damage. The, the enemy team takes physical damage, uh, takes 5% more physical damage. So this is good if you're playing with any melee, even Demo Warlocks, because a lot of their, Demo, their pet damage is physical. Sweep everything? I think he just rep me, so he can't really do much to uh, like CC me. And then you want to position uh, pretty much as best you can. Avoid any damage. Avoid any damage. I It does not matter. If, if teams start looking at you, you don't want to get to the point where a team is swapping to you. You want to make it as difficult as you can for the team to get to you. So if you're on the pillar right now, and you see this guy, this big red dragons starting to run at me a little bit i will instantly just rop on top of them make it so they cannot hit me they don't get the chance to hit me they because if they waste their time trying to hit me my two dps are doing damage to somebody and while the other team is doing no damage that means the other healer is using mana using cooldowns and i'm not as soon as they even get to me let's if someone gets to me on the pillar i'll instantly port and if they use any mobility to get to me i'll port back and I will do that over and over. I'll in-cap to peel for myself if I have to. I'll leg sweep to peel for myself if I have to. Just make it so the other team cannot hit you. Uh, do your best to avoid damage. Um, don't, just make it so you are not an option for them to swap to. And obviously, there are going to be times where teams can get to you. So you do have defensive cooldowns that you can rotate. I'll kind of go through the rotation I do. First off, I use Fort Brew pretty much as my first defensive cooldown. It's a six-minute cooldown. You're only going to use this once a round. So... Might as well just use it first. Um, increases your health, reduces the damage you take. So very good for using. I like using it first. It also lasts like what, 15 seconds? Uh, lasts 15 seconds. So odds are that teams are gonna probably stun into it. So you get the man, the you get the stun reduction. You get the damage reduction while you're stunned is really good. If you don't have Fort Brew, it kind of depends on what type of damage they're doing. Diffuse magic lasts six seconds and reduces all magic damage you take. So if you're playing against warlocks, anything with magic, even demon hunters, rep alleys, anything like mages, shadow priests, any anything magic, I would use diffuse magic. Anything else, I would pretty much use dampen harm. Now, one little trick with dampen harm that I would I would recommend is you could use dampen harm while kicked. So if you get kicked on your soothing mist, you can still use dampen harm. It also lasts 10 seconds, so it's really good if you could use it right before stun. But uh, that's pretty much what I use dampen harm is if I get kicked, I'll, I'll dampen harm any damage if teams are on me. Healing elixirs are cost no mana, and they give you this restore man. They restore your health. They are affected by dampening though, which really sucks. So later in dampening, they're not going to do much. But at the start of the solo shuffle, 
yeah, I would just use he uh, healing elixirs to kind of heal yourself. Um, put a Redoing Mist on you. Healing elixir will normally keep you alive and well for most for the most part without having to use pretty much any mana. Talked about Zen Spheres, but if someone's hitting you, they they do ten they take ten percent more damage from everything, but they also deal ten percent less damage to you. So if you're getting trained by someone. Put it on them. Yeah, even if they're not taking damage, like just put the Zen Sphere on them. They do 10% less damage to you. It's a really good way to just peel for yourself. Basically gives you a like a like a wall versus them, which is great. So keep that in mind. That's really, 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 really good. Ring of Peace, although could be used to CC healers, can also be good to um, peel for yourself. I would not stand in the middle of it. A lot of people have, you know, mobility or range damage to get you. So I would just use it to extend the pillar and then it helps you get behind the pillar or LOS. Uh, we also have Revival and Life Cocoon. Those are your two main cooldowns, right? Uh, Mistweaver is pretty much all about healing output and avoiding damage. So Revival or Restoral can be used while stunned. Does not make you, does not dispel magic, but it does make it so you can use while stunned and works with Peace Weaver. Trust me, I wouldn't play it if it didn't work. It does work with Peace Weaver, which makes it so whoever's healed by Restoral or Revival is immune to all magical effects by two seconds. It also makes it so it's a minute and a half cooldown and not three minute cooldown, which is really nice. So I would use this if you're stunned and there's, you know, chaos bolts coming in hot, you know, any cyclones for CC on you, traps on you. You could use it to avoid CC or damage, which is uh, great. And then you also have Life Cocoon, which again is massive. Ma Life Cocoon with 50 stacks of Comic Coalescence, which is this talent right here, is absolutely massive. So I try to hold on to my Life Cocoon as long as I can because again, it's a minute, it's a minute, what, 15 cooldown. You'll get... If you use it off cooldown, maybe you get a second life cocoon. But the later you go in dampening, the more you want to hold on to it. So you want to make sure that you hold on to it as long as you can. If you have to press it, press it. But try not to overlap with your teammates, which obviously you can't control all the time. But you do want to kind of hold on to it until later in dampening. And that is pretty much all I got. I know this is a random video. I just thought I would make the video because I was getting questions, uh, a lot a lot of questions about Solo Shuffle and how to heal it, what to heal, what build, all that. Um, I will put a Solo Shuffle game at the end, like right after this, so that you could see how I heal and what the games are like in Solo Shuffle. And I'll also put some tips and tricks on the screen for when I see something that, that I do or the enemy team does or try to avoid something, something like that. But yeah, that is pretty much it for me. If you have any questions at all, please let me know. I'm more than happy to answer any questions you might have. And that's it for me. Hope everyone has a fantastic rest of day. Hope you enjoy the video. And I'll see you later. Uh, they probably go DK, right? Yeah. Tiger's Lust. The spell here. Stunned. Revival. Be healing. They trapped and sleepwalked me at the same time. Probably shouldn't have to do anything. Be healing. Nullifying, nullifying Shroud for another 10 seconds. So there's nothing. There's really nothing. I, can, I, I There's quite literally nothing I can do. They're standing in the thing. Top pet. Oh, he just dragged on top of me to fear me. Okay. Sweep everything. Cocoon here. Be healing. We try to... No wish. Yeah, that's right. We taunt that pet every day, baby. Just I'm hunter, so he can't kick me. Kick that. Nice, nice. Less damage now. The healing. Tiger's lust. Juke, uh, Juke hunter there. I'm pretty sure. Nice AMS. Stunned. Be healing. Trap full. We'll trigger this. Trying to juke the uh, the evoker kick, but I don't think he's pressing it. Incap this. Nice, we got air communion. That's good. Dr triple dr stun is really good as well. It's gonna trap me. Oh, hello. Kick that. Sweep everything. Revival. Oh, I'm scattered. Let me get this revival. Beautiful. Disarm hunter. Tom pet. Tried talking to the pet, but I don't know if it went down the way I wanted it to. I'm feared full. I have Cocoon really soon. Don't die. Nice rally. Really good rally. I might life Cocoon with this rally. I'm going to do it because I have more health. Feared. I can rob to interrupt. Kick that. Todd. 
Todd? Beautiful. Um, sweep that? I'm gonna... Nice, we got communion. Beautiful. If we didn't get communion, I was gonna panda. But I might still follow this up, I think. Yeah, we're following this up. Actually, we're gonna DR panda here, too. Where's my warlock? Tigers lost this. I'm scattered. Maybe, maybe taunt the pet. Oh, he used a global. That's really good. Cocoon here. Good. He used a global on the feign death. Where's my DK? Get over here. Big healing. A lot of healing. Just our warrior. Taunt pet or taunt anything. Nice. Good AMS. Big healing. Feared. I have to trigger this. Stun DR. <laughs> Sweep dragon. Incap trinket. Oh, why not? I think we're dead. Scattered. Tom pet maybe. Tom pet. No kicks. Revival here. Have to. Disarm warrior. Sleepwalked. I disarmed the warrior here before this, though. Be healing. Be healing. Oh, trying so hard to keep you alive. So hard to keep you alive. Trap full, you're dead. Kill the warrior. I have cocoon off this. Please don't die. Nice IBF. Cocoon. Oh. Never give up. Never give up. <laughs> nice blind. Get some hots here. Sweep everything. Fear from the warrior. I don't know. I would have trinketed there. Because now he's not going to have anything for his, his burst. It's just weird. I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. Nice aim Z. Rob back in. In cap. Revival everything. Nice kick. I kicked that. Just our warrior. Before CC. Really good. Really good. Fire breath is not fun, but they don't really. The dragon's the only one that kick, but they're not. The dragon's not kicking. Nice trap. Stunned. Be healing. I don't have anything for this. This is a good uh, sleepwalk. Kick that. Oh, got it off. I sweep. Dispel. We got remote communion. Beautiful. Renewing mist. Be healing. I have disarm for the warrior. I'm just going to disarm. I tried disarm before this fear. Disarm warrior. Be healing. Uh, I need to get some. He's just got no flying shroud up too. That's so annoying. Um, there's nothing I can do with the dragon. I mean, maybe I could like panda one off, but nice trap. Rop next heal. Nice. Stunned. I don't think they have anything off. Maybe a sleepwalk off. Be healing. Nice trap. Stun DK. Oh. Stun DK. Can't heal. I disarm off so we can't heal. Incap. Todd. Oh, man. You're so lucky he didn't show up. Todd ain't showing up today. That's okay. That's Frenzy Regen. Should be fine. Juke TK. See, you don't want to overlap in solo shuffle. That's like the most important thing. Actually, they have no kick right now. Let's Shaylin's gift this. Yeah, beautiful. I'm going to cocoon here before the CC on me. Beautiful. Hunter still has turtle, so should be able to just live. Be healing. Disarm DK, you can't heal. And we're communion from the dragon. I can't do anything to the dragon, though. He still has a uh, shroud up for four seconds. I think they definitely die next uh, go, though. Like, now. I'm going in hot. Solo mission. Sweep the tyrant and the dragon. Revival kick that. Couldn't. 
Do damage here. Todd. Nice. Stun. No trap on the dragon. Stun on me into sleepwalk. They overlap a little bit of stun. Fire breath. He's going to take a lot of damage. I got the trinket cocoon. I think it's DK. But that's just me. I'll put out in the warrior. Be healing. Sweep everything. And we're communion. Beautiful. Good. Really good. Warlock's taking a lot of damage, though. Be healing. I have. I guess I'll just put on the warrior. I don't know. Unless. I guess we're going Death Knight now. We might lose here. I think we die here. He got kicked. He has port, though. Big healing. You have port? Yes. Revival? Shaylin's gift? I can't do anything to the dragon right now. Nothing to the dragon. Oh, so good. Triple sweep. Sweep these two. Disarm DK, you can't heal. Do damage. Todd? Todd? Oh. And kept off the kick. Nice. Good fear. Tom Pet. I tried, but I don't think I don't think I was quick enough. Oh, sorry, bud. I don't think I was quick enough. I'm sleepwalked off. I'll train Cocoon. Don't use wall. Good. Stunned. I have revival if I need to. Dispel that stun. Big healing. I thought I had Yulon for some reason. I don't know why. Nice, 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 nice. A panda. Talking pet. Disarm DK so we can't heal. Revival here. Try to immune the trap. I think I did. Yeah, I did. Oh my god. I meant to taunt and I kicked that guy so fast. Holy shit. Oh my god. Oh my god. All right, no flying strata. I'm going to go for a Shaylin's gift here just for the buff. Just simply just for the buff. Uh, I have damage reduction haste, which is really good. I'm slept here. I have no outs. We have wall. Trying to juke TK. I, I juke the hunter there. I'm just going to, I'm just casting now. If, if he kicks me, it is what it is. Uh, disarm DK so we can't heal. Get away. Incap that. Really good. Be healing. Beautiful. Good job.